Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam Ghazali's Jawah al-Quran, the Jews of the Quran. And we have read Surat al-Jinn. Uh, Imam Ghazali chose five verses. Verse number three and the other four are the last uh, uh, four verses. The uh, main topic here is that uh, it is about, as the uh, title, as the name of the surah uh, indicates, about the uh, the jinn. And uh, we talk about um, beings that uh, exist. Um, they exist and also they... Uh, they uh, are part of this uh, life, if you will. Uh, I would, um, I think that I have done this in, uh, as an exercise and um, in my mind, uh, in as much as we believe in the existence of the angels, we don't see them. In general, we don't see them unless they take anthropomorphic uh, form like the angels on the way, uh, on their way to the people of Sayyidina Lut salam to the people of Lot. Uh, that's only an example. Um, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, uh, the famous hadith when he approached the Prophet sallam, and he sat right in front of him, uh, his knees against his knees, very, uh, which shows that there's uh, uh, mm, uh, that they know each other and that uh, the relationship also permits this proximity. At that moment, he uh, uh, Jibreel salam, the Archangel Gabriel, uh, spotless uh, white clothing. People did not know him, but also uh, it did not show that he was traveling and his clothing were spotless. So you have these different uh, uh, experiences if you will uh, but again uh, these experiences with the angels when they take anthropomorphic form uh, I did read um, Imam al um, I think he said that uh, it's possible to see the angels but he did not specify in what uh, in what form so along this uh, line we have the jinn uh, in the uh, in the hadith, um, obviously that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created uh, created the uh, angels from light. Uh, he created the uh, jinn from smokeless uh, flame, and the hadith says, and he created uh, Adam, human beings, from what you have been told, meaning from clay. Um, the uh, they see us, we don't see them, the jinn, but they exist. Uh, in fact, each one of us is assigned uh, a jinn that will uh, accompany him, accompany her. Uh, and this is the meaning of the word uh, qareen in the, uh, in the Quran. Uh, there is a uh, hadith of uh, Ibn Mas'ud narrated by the Imam uh, Muslim in which the Prophet uh, informed, the, uh, informed the Muslims that uh, the uh, that there is a jinn uh, appointed to uh, as a as a constant uh, companion and the companions ask him and uh, and you too uh, O Messenger of uh, Allah he said me too but Allah help me uh, and he has submitted, meaning that he became uh, a Muslim, so that he only helps me to do good. Uh, and this is why we pray, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us uh, from both min al jinnati wa nas, from people and from the uh, jinn. Uh, we don't pray uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the angels because the angels do not do us any uh, harm. And if you are strong in your faith, 
then they uh, will have hard time influencing you. Uh, it's very as simple as that, but they will uh, definitely. It's a constant. Imam Ghazali says that there is a a, a fight, there is a battle uh, between the soldiers of uh, the angels and the soldiers of uh, Satan. And the uh, battleground is your heart. So they fight. So the angelic uh, power, if you will, versus the uh, satanic power. And that's a daily. Uh, it's a daily, not only daily, like in the broad day, in broad daylight, and that you will have a respite, that you will have a break in the, in the evening. Uh, a scholar was asked if uh, uh, Satan uh, sleeps and uh, he said had he done so he would have uh, a break, would have a respite. There are many things that one can mention about the the uh, the jinn. Uh, we don't talk about mythology, we talk about faith, we talk about theology. There are popular things uh, that circulate. Well, I don't speak about uh, these, you know, uh, popular things. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted the jinn powers that uh, were not granted to us uh, human beings. And uh, when we read, we will probably, we will probably uh, read uh, more details about uh, their uh, attributes. Um, remember that in the story of Sayyidina uh, Suleiman alayhi salam, when he uh, asked about his in his entourage, uh, who could bring him the throne of uh, uh, the Queen of Sheba, and uh, the Ifrit from the Jinn said that I could bring it, uh, I could bring it uh, to you before you uh, get up from your uh, uh, seating from your. Uh, seating position and there was another one who it does not specify it could be another jinn it could be a human being it could be someone who has knowledge of the book knowledge from the book knowledge of the book uh, he told him that before you uh, before you blink or before you that, that's really uh, it could be a metaphor of what really uh, before you um, react in any way and uh, the uh, throne was her throne was right before him uh, so they have been empowered and uh, the uh, animosity between the jinn and the human being uh, was like it goes back to day one when satan refused to uh, prostrate before adam and that was the very first case of uh, racism, if you will, in the true sense of the word, literally. He uh, said about himself when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him why he did not uh, prostrate himself. Uh, he, uh, before Adam, he said that I am better than him. Uh, you created me from fire and you created him from uh, clay. From mud. The jinn are divided into Muslims and non-Muslims, and this is this will be uh, manifest in the uh, in this surah that some um, jinn uh, did listen to the uh, uh, Quran and they became uh, Muslims. So let's read, inshallah, starting with the very first verse, and we'll move. Uh, We'll try to read the whole surah, if not, well, at least a good part of it before we um, reach the verses that Imam Ghazali chose as uh, as Jews. A'udhu billahi s-sami'a ni minash shaytan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul uhiya ilayya anna ustama'a nafarun min al-jinni faqalu inna sami'na qur'anan ajaba. Yahdi ila al-rushd fa'amanna bih. ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا وأنه تعالى جد ربنا ما اتخذ صاحبته ولا ولدا 
وأنه كان قدس في هنا على الله شططة وأن ظننا وأن ظننا أن لن تقول الإنس والجن على الله كاذبة وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رهقا وأنهم ظنوا كما ظننتم أن لن يبعث الله أحدا So we'll stop here with the first seven uh, verses أو oh, say قل um, It's addressing the Prophet Sallallahu It has been revealed to me that a group of jinn, Nafar, listen to the uh, listen to the Quran uh, and said to their fellow uh, jinn, "Indeed, we have heard a wondrous uh, recitation." That's the. Uh, an understanding of the uh, Quran, uh, Iqra is proclaim, Iqra is recite. It leads to, it leads, it guides, it leads to right guidance. So we believed in it, and we will never associate anyone with our Lord in worship. Tawheed. Now we believe that our Lord uh, exalted His Majesty, has neither taken a mate nor offspring. And that the foolish of us used to utter outrageous falsehoods about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We certainly thought that the humans and the jinn would never speak lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some men used to seek refuge with some jinn, so they increase each other in wickedness. We'll get back, inshallah, to the uh, some of the uh, some extra meaning. Here's simply a simple translation. And every translation is an interpretation, as you well know. And those humans thought, just like you, Jen, that Allah would not resurrect anyone for judgment. So the universality of the uh, of the Quran. So the, for example, the prophets before Prophet Muhammad sallam used to be sent to their own respective peoples. Here we have. Uh, a message that is universal for all human beings and also for the for the jinn. And this is a message that the Prophet ﷺ was asked to uh, inform his own uh, people that the that the jinn, that the group of jinn who listened to him uh, believed in him, and they followed him. The Quran is a book that leads, that guides in lights that uh, directs to, towards uh, the straight path the, to, towards success in terms of the uh, hereafter and they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they, uh, they, you know, they uh, part of their belief is that they will not associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is similar to a verse in uh, Surah Al-Ahqaf now, the translation of the third uh, verse, it is translated, uh, Now we believe that our Lord exalted as His Majesty has neither taken a mate nor offspring. Uh, Amru Rabbina, that's one uh, tafsir, and uh, the uh, Ta'ala is that uh, also in the tafsir that uh, his gifts, his uh, that his uh, uh, the fact that he's uh, omnipotent, uh, that his uh, grace, uh, that his uh, that the bounty uh, reaches all human beings, believers and non-believers. But attesting that he, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had neither uh, a partner, uh, a wife, uh, nor uh, neither wife nor a uh, child. And this is uh, obviously uh, a response to, to, to the uh, uh, 
theological construct that uh, um, attribute a son to uh, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to God. So when this when that construct uh, says uh, son of God, it's not a revealed uh, message. It's a man-made, if you will, uh, man-made uh, theological construct. And number uh, the verse number four. That the foolish amongst the jinn, uh, meaning the foolish uh, of us, used to utter outrageous falsehoods about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, falsehoods and nonsense, lies, uh, And we certainly thought that humans and jinn would never speak lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very uh, uh, important to uh, what people do. And the same thing applies to uh, to the uh, to the jinn. And the lie would be the lie here because the context was, has been preceded by a denial of uh, having a wife or a child, a son, and that's the uh, you know one of the biggest lies against Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Intahu, stop it, don't say it. The Quran says to the people of the uh, of the book, uh, one needs to be courageous in. Uh, seeing things for what they are in the hadith of the prophet وسلم, an amazing hadith really yulad al mawlud al fitra a newborn is born in a state of natural disposition which means that natural disposition is uh, aligned with Tawheed, with the believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that it has no contradiction, uh, you know, uh, or antagonism or uh, difference with the Islamic worldview. The hadith continues by saying, فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّ دَانِهِ أَوْ نَصْرَانِهِ أَوْ مِجُسَانِهِ It is uh, his hair, of course, uh, parents, who... Uh, render him, make him, change him from that state of uh, natural disposition from fitra uh, to become a Jew uh, or a Christian or a Majan. Now, verse number six, I don't think that the English translation uh, captures the uh, the idea and some men used to seek refuge with some jinn so they increase each other in wickedness. Uh, wickedness that's okay uh, of course uh, that would be wicked uh, for human beings to seek refuge with the jinn seek refuge with the jinn the uh, to explain this we need to uh, understand that the uh, the arabs in pre-islamic uh, arabia they uh, whenever they traveled and they reach a place they raise their voice and they seek refuge in, you know, with the uh, jinn master of that place. So that they will not be harmed by the jinn of the place. And uh, it means that the human beings are afraid of the, uh, of the jinn. And this is why when they realize that uh, uh, that the human beings were afraid. Fazaduhum rahaqa. In the translation, uh, as we have just uh, read, they increase each other in wickedness. I think it's the the jinn uh, are the ones who uh, put more burden uh, as a result of that fear on the human uh, beings manipulating them etc they did believe uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not uh, you know resurrect anyone for uh, 
for judgment for the uh, of course that would be the day of judgment day of the resurrection uh, it be meaning also that the uh, you have thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after all this period the between that would be uh, to contextualize it between Jesus Christ peace upon him and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Prophet Muhammad peace upon him uh, you know people thought that there would be no more uh, prophets no more you know that will be sent and uh, I remember being asked uh, by a young um, a woman, non-Muslim, uh, from the people of the book, uh, asking me at the end of a lecture at the uh, Jerusalem uh, WCA, the woman uh, organization, the equivalent of the uh, YMCA, Uh, she asked me, why do we need another prophet? And, you know, why do we need someone after Jesus Christ, peace upon him? And uh, my answer is that uh, a, f- a, pro- a prophet is someone that uh, needs, that is in a, in a position of leadership, but his way of life is uh, to be imitated. And... Um, I said that if we need to uh, to know how to behave as uh, couples, as married uh, couples, male and female, of course, today, never I didn't say this at the time because that was not on the table. Uh, it's been maybe 20 years. Uh, the change to the structure of the family. And I said that... Uh, we would not find anything in the life of Jesus Christ uh, about this because he did not get married to our knowledge, of course. And that we would know how to behave because the Prophet ﷺ did get married. I just give only this example, one can go on. SubhanAllah, uh, the seal of the uh, Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ was sent. And... Uh, this interpretation makes sense much more than the uh, um, limiting oneself to uh, thinking about the resurrection uh, at the end of time. And uh, the next uh, verse is about the uh, jinn uh, realizing that the heavens is uh, full with uh, with guards and uh, not only that but also washuhuba here translated as shooting stars shooting stars um, okay the uh, you talk about if if it's really within uh, within the Earth's uh, atmosphere, you know, that uh, a meteor would burn, uh, would burn uh, upon entering the uh, Earth's atmosphere, friction. Once it burns, we talk about Shihab, Shuhuba. Uh, targeting the jinn who try to eavesdrop on the uh, on the heaven uh, the uh, jinn continue to say uh, as narrated in the quran we used to take up positions there for eavesdrop for eavesdropping but whoever dares this eavesdrop now will find a flare a show uh, flying in wait for them this reminds me of a question that I have read uh, someone uh, asked a Muslim scholar this uh, it might have been Abu Hanifa uh, um, um, how, how is it possible that the um, non-believing for example uh, jinn who will end up in hellfire will be uh, punished, tortured 
with fire when they were created from fire and the answer was like a pebble uh, being uh, hitting the uh, questioner not to hurt but to show that he uh, uh, originally was created out of clay out of earth out of mud and nevertheless he was hurt by the when he was hit by the uh, same now we have no clue whether evil is intended for those on earth or the lord intends for them what is right the in fact the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent all the these messengers and prophets so that to guide humanity so they could return to him so yes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like uh, that which is good to happen to us but we need to make the right uh, choice we have free will uh, because here it says وَلَا وَأَنَّا لَا نَذْرِي أَشَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْرَادَ بِهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ رَشَدًا وَالشَّرُ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ the حديث صحيح the problem of evil which has you know uh, evil does exist and it's not only the absence of good and the distinction between that the um, jinn some of them were um, are righteous and some uh, are less so we have been of different factions we have, we have followed different paths طرائق جمع طريق uh, that could apply also to uh, human beings that we have we have went in different directions as humanity now we truly know that we cannot frustrate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth uh, nor can we escape from him in fact everything we can say that uh, everything you can uh, in fact, everything you run away from, you run away from it or from him or from her to something else, something else, someone else. Only in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you run away from him, you run away to him, really. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ In the Quran, do run away to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only refuge. That's the only right refuge. When we Hear the guidance of the Quran, we readily believed in it. When Allah Mas Man al Huda Aman Nabi Fama Yuman Birabi Falaha Baksa Wadaraha. For whoever believes in their Lord will have no fear of being denied or reward or wronged. And again it confirms that some of them are Muslim, some of them are not. And among us are those who have submitted to Allah and those who are deviant. وَأَنَّ مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ Those who were deviant, they are going to be fuel for hellfire. Had they uh, followed the right path, they would have certainly grant them ab you know, abundant rain or to drink really. One of the um, verses that caught uh, my eye in, in this context um, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِ لَا فَلَا دَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Indeed, uh, mosques, places of worship, are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else should be worshipped in these uh, mosques. And uh, the... Uh, some airports right now, some universities, they have common chapels for um, all students from all background, religious backgrounds. But at, uh, uh, at the uh, airport in Amsterdam, as one example, they have one place for uh, Muslims, Christians and Jews. It is divided uh, the architecture. Uh, you have like three corners 
but open space so you know immediately when you uh, enter I've been there uh, a couple of times so when you enter you would know that this corner is for the Muslims this corner is for the Christians and this corner is for the Jews uh, they wanted to create uh, a common place but in fact when people worship they are on their own so the uh, so it's very important to uh, does it help to have a common place like this or uh, have practically I believe in, in these places uh, pretty much uh, the Muslims are the ones who usually go to these places I've been to many airports with many uh, airport mosques or uh, uh, chapels or uh, prayer rooms etc and um, all, almost 100 percent it's only the muslims who frequent these uh, these places subhanallah the very last uh, verses that uh, imam Razadi chose as jews uh, from uh, verse 25 to uh, verse 28 Say, I do not know if what you are promised is near, or my Lord has set a distant time for it. In fact, since just think about it, since it is coming, uh, it's not distant at all. He is the knower of the unseen. This is why we believe they would say metaphysics, but here, Alimul Ghaib, Ilmul Ghaib. He does not disclose uh, any of this uh, knowledge to to anyone, except some uh, knowledge is parted to uh, messengers of his choice, Allah's choice. Then he appoints angel guards before and behind them for protection to ensure that the messengers fully deliver the uh, messages of their Lord though he already knows all about them and keeps account of everything. With this we conclude this reading. Alhamdulillah. The next uh, reading will be uh, from Surah Al-Qiyamah. Imam Ghazali chose four verses until then subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh